Welcome back, it's me, Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review, and today we are diving deep into my toy vault as we take a look at some pretty unique and old toys. Um, Alright, so to start off, I'm a big anime fan, or at least I was growing up. I don't really keep up to date with like modern anime, but during the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, um, I was pretty deep into anime and one of the properties that I was really really fond of um, was Robotech and for those of you who are familiar with Robotech, Robotech was actually three different animes rolled up into one. Um, there was originally Macross, uh, the Southern Cross and then there was the um, New Generation. So what we're going to take a look at here today um, are a couple of toys from the first generation of Robotech, which is Macross. And more specifically, we're, we're going to take a look at the Robotech Zentradi Tactical Battle Pod. And we have two different versions we're going to take a look at today. Uh, first, on the left, this is the Toynami uh, Tactical Battle Pod, but this one's a little bit different. This is the one with the missile pods mounted on the top. And then on the right, in this giant box, we have the... Alright, so this will not fit under my camera. So I'm going to have to turn the box sideways, so just bear with me. So this is the Exo Squad Robotech series, the original battle machines. And this one is the Zentradi Tactical Battle Pod. Alright, so to begin, let's first take a look at um, the Toynami one. Alright, so we have the Toynami um, Zentradi Battle Pod. This originally belonged to my brother. Um, he used to keep it at his workstation. And uh, for whatever reason, I don't know, I, I came into possession of it. <laughs> so um, I keep this with my kind of like collection of Robotech toys. And so if you remember uh, Robotech, the Macross Saga, the major villains initially in the series were the Zentradi. And they piloted these um, two-legged walkers. It's very similar to the ATST from um, from Star Wars, and I, th I I'm almost tempted to say these might have came before the ATST. I might be wrong on that though. So anyhow, the um, aliens known as the Zentradi or the Zentran, uh, depending on you know if you're into the, the original Japanese or versus the American series, uh, this was kind of like their giant mech uh, foot soldiers uh, they were bipedal um, they, they had kind of like the chicken walker legs and then the pilot uh, who's the pilots so the Zentradi pilots they are about I think like 50 feet tall so they, they kind of had to like curl themselves up into like uh, almost like a crouching position or a ball to fit inside of here and then the pilot would sit inside scrunched up inside of this like kind of like bulb area and then the battle pod had Two forward blasters in the front. Uh, let's get this into focus. They had the two forward blasters. Uh, this front part was actually the hatch that would open and then the pilot would be seated inside. And then they'd have two larger blasters on top, as you see here. Um, right here, that's the Zentran logo. And so the standard uh, Zentradi battle pod did not have the missile pods on the top. It was just strictly this so it had the two forward guns and the, the cannons on top uh, the heavily armed battle pods which this one is had the, the missile pods on top so this is a Toynami product um, it's copyright uh, 1984 and uh, so it's, it's copyright 1984 um, and 2010 HG USA. HG stands for Harmony Gold USA, and that's the uh, American company who owns the rights to Robotech. In 1984 is when Robotech debuted in the States. But I think in Japan, I want to say it's, it was owned by Big West. I think that was the name of the company. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, Toynami, they dabbled in Robotech merchandise. I think they still do, but um, 
back in the day, early 2000s, they produced like masterpiece editions of the the Valkyrie fighters, the Alpha fighters, the Beta fighters, and I think to this day, I think they actually produce maybe like smaller mechs and some action figures. Um, I was never really into the Toy Nami stuff because uh, for me, I grew up in the 80s, so I was, you know, my first taste of actual like real or at least the closest thing to real Robotech merchandise or Macross merchandise uh, was the Transformers um, toy Jetfire. And Jetfire was pretty much pulled from Macross. And he was a, a Valkyrie fighter. So the Toynami stuff, it was cool, but for whatever reason, I never got into it. Uh, just because it wasn't, like, in my at least at the time, in my opinion, I kind of felt like they weren't, like, 100% authentic Macross products. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking back at at it now i felt i feel really stupid because i should have jumped on the chance to buy these when these were out because some of these go for like a lot of money now so here's a front view of the battle pot up close um over here is kind of like the optical this is like um where the zentran pilot could like view things it's almost like similar to like the the confederate droids in star wars in the prequels you know how they all have like that red eye in the front uh, here's up close shot of the missile pods. So there's two racks with two missiles each. Uh, here's a profile view. And then here are the orbital boosters. So when this thing's in space, this is kind of how it navigates. And then here's the back. Here's the hatch. All right, I stand corrected, right? I was confusing it with another thing. So the pilots, the hatch isn't on the front, it's actually in the back. So this is the hatch which opens up and the pilots could, uh, you know, enter and exit. Uh, here's the legs. There's the feet. So this, this toy, in terms of its articulation, it's very limited. Uh, this, I don't know, in my opinion, this thing barely qualifies as an action figure just because it's more like a vinyl display piece. Uh, the only things that are articulated, the guns don't move. This doesn't move. Um, I'm not sure if it, it kind of moves at the waist. It's kind of a tight fit though. So there's articulation here at the waist. And the legs do move, but there's no like knee articulation, which is unfortunate. And the knees, at least one of these kind of swivels a little. I'm not sure if it's broken. Oh, it, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Don't tell my brother I broke his toy. All right. So yeah, um. This is how it, I guess it's assembled. So there's like a metal rod and it plugs in here. But I believe when you buy this, you don't assemble it. It looks like this was glued on, but I think the glue just over time wore out. So yeah, this is the Toy Nami version of the Battle Pod. And yeah, let's take a look at the big boy. All right, so this is the the hypocrisy in my thinking. So when I was older, for some reason, I thought the Toy Nami toy wasn't like an authentic Macross product. But at the same time, this Exo Squad Robotech toy um, produced by Playmates, originally made by Matchbox, for some odd reason, I kind of considered this an authentic toy, even though this never saw the light of day in Japan. You know, this was designed and made in the U.S. So... Um, Let's take a look at this thing. All right, so this is the Exo Squad Robotech series original battle machines. This is the Zentradi Tactical Battle Pod. Uh, bottle, uh, battle Pod class E frame features dual mounted particle beam cannons, top mounted laser guns, 360 auto cannons, and multi positionable combat legs. All right, so for this toy, the pilot, the hatch is in the front which I believe is not the case in the cartoon. So this was odd. So Exo Squad was a completely unique toy property in the United States. Um, it was big in like the mid to like late 90s. And at some point, uh, Playmo ah, Playmates acquired uh, the Robotech toys, which this was originally made by Matchbox during the 80s. So it was kind of weird that Playmates revitalized a short-lived toy line that was originally produced by Hot Wheel or produced by Matchbox. 
So that was one of the weird odd things with Robotech. Um, they never had like a solid um, outside of Toy Nami. They never really had a solid uh, company that just ma manufactured the toys exclu exclusively. Um, so it was really weird that you know the toys originally came out maybe like in '85 or '86, and then you know the Matchbox line only lasted like a year or two. Then it went dormant. And then I remember I was at Target with my buddy JC, and this was like in the, I think like mid or late 90s. And we were at Target, and all of a sudden, Exo Squad were producing Robotech toys. And if you're familiar with Exo, Exo Squad, it has nothing to do with Robotech. And I don't think these Robotech toys even appeared in the cartoon. Um, I think uh, Playmates was just banking on the nostalgia. So um, they acquired the Robotech toys and they re-released them. So this is a re-release of a toy made by Matchbox in the 80s. It gets confusing, I know, but I don't know. All right, so the box art's really cool. Uh, awesome, awesome illustration. So you have this Entrati Battle Pod. Um, oh, yeah. All right, this is me being scatterbrained. Real quick before we open up this guy, I want to get at least a measurement on this just for the size comparison later. Uh, so the Toy Nami one measures in at about, um, I want to say under eight inches to the top of the battle pod, but if you include the gun, uh, the missile missile rack, it's about under nine and a half. So for the sake of um, compare, comparing this one to this one, we'll just say this one comes in at uh, eight and three quarters uh, from the foot to the top of this dome. All right, so what you're going to see is that this thing here, this is actually pretty large. This is made to fit like a G.I. Joe scaled action figure. So you're looking at like a three and three quarter action figure. Um, all right, so we looked at the front of the back. I mean, the front of the box. Here's the side of the box. A new attack mecha E-frame. E-frame was a term used for um, Exo Squad. So, all right, same information that we got in the front. This was made by Playmates. Uh, Harmony Gold owns Robotech. And Universal Cartoon Studios, they were the studios that was putting out the Exo Squad cartoon. Um, so here's the battle pod in deep space mode. You just fold the legs back. And then here's what it looks like stock. Uh, the back of the box. Um, all right, so they have kind of a description of how they, I guess, how they kind of rationalize Robotech fitting into the world of Exo Squad. So far from the home world of Exo Squad, the Robotech Master Zor develops robotechnology and launches reflex-powered machines through a hazardous and unstable face space fold, which empties into Exo territory, territory. Joining the battle alongside mankind's final hope, Robotech War Machines reinforce Exo Squad's fighting teams with their special class of attack mecha E-frames. It's the ultimate battle with the ultimate machines, Exo Squad, and Robotech. So this was such a radical idea because these two properties have nothing to do with each other. It's almost like taking like Star Wars and somehow coming up with some sort of rational explanation of like blending that in with like Masters of the Universe. So um, here's some tactical information on the battle pod. Uh, So, I don't know. You can read this later. I don't want I, if I'd read it all, I'd probably end up losing my voice. Um, here's a description of the toy and all the different features, you know, the guns, the cannons, the legs. Um, this is not going to fit under my camera. Here's how you put the pilot inside. And then here's some of the other toys. And if you're familiar with Robotech, you'll recognize a lot of these mechs. All right, so let's, and there's actually even a uh, Exo Squad video game on the Genesis and SNES. All right, so let's take this toy out. Finally, um, this box is gigantic. Hopefully, I'll be able to fit most of the toy under my camera. Like I said, this is a pretty large vehicle. All right, I haven't unboxed this in probably over ten years. This was something I acquired on eBay like way back in the day. So I don't remember what condition this toy is in, so let me take it out off camera. This is going to be a pain in the butt. All 
All right, just bear with me. This box is being stubborn. There's a cardboard insert inside, and okay, we have the instructions. Alright, so um, uh, I don't know if I haven't actually unboxed this back in the day when I bought this. I might have just been collecting it for the sake of collecting it. So here's the sticker pack, which is unused. Um, <laughs> maybe this wasn't a good idea. Because this, if this thing's like completely mint, I should have just left it alone. Um, Alright, so here's the battle pod. Okay, so I'm going to... I'm going to exercise some caution here about taking this out because it looks like <laughs> this thing's never been removed before. Um, so at the time when I bought it, chances are I was probably going on some sort of weird like Macross Robotech kick. And I was just trying to hunt down merchandise. And I might have just bought this for the sake of just wanting to have it and I never opened it until today. So this might not be a full, full review. If anything, this, is, this, this might be strictly on an unboxing. I'm hoping all the accessories are here. I don't know if they are. Oh, okay, they are. They are. Shoot. All right, so the guns are taped onto the box here, but I don't want to ruin the, the cardboard, so I'm going to leave that alone. All right, so like I said, I think this is the first time this thing's ever been unboxed. So, uh, I don't know. Looking looking back, I should probably just left this alone. Okay, so here's the Zentradi Battle Pod. So, what year is this? Okay, so this original toy came out in like in the 80s, but this was a re-release by um, Playmates. And this was came out in 1994, where I think the original one might have been like 1986. Alright, so it... Yeah, I've never opened this before. It's kind of interesting. There's like... The paint application looks like it might have been upgraded from the original one because there's some a slight dusting here to kind of give it some wear and tear. It's almost like a poor man's weathering effect and yeah, let's open this up all right so i'm not gonna mount the top cannons oh this is cool so the boosters on this actually rotate which is which is neat okay i gotta remember where this went all right, this is where it gets kind of iffy. I'm kind of scared of extending the legs because, you know, this toy is pretty old. It's from like 1994. I don't want to accidentally break anything. If the if the plastic's kind of like, um, I don't know, degraded over time. So here's the instruction sheet, um, and the stickers never used. I don't. Give me a second. I, Let's see if these stickers are actually, like, exact. So I'm not sure if these stickers are just, like, complete gibberish or if these were, like, actually, like, based off of the actual real cartoon. Because it looks like there's some of the si similar symbols. Like, they have the Zentran logo. Um, uh, the leg markings... They're kind of similar. They have that, that upside down A on the leg, but the the gibberish underneath doesn't match. So.
All right, so the, the Toinami one over here we stated was at um, eight, eight and three quarters from the bottom of the foot to the top of the dome. As you can see, this older Matchbox slash Playmates toy is considerably a lot larger. Uh, this one stands in at about uh, almost 11 inches from the bottom of the foot to the top of the dome. As you can see, there's similarities. This one has the forward cannons in the front. Um, you can open this, and there's the cockpit for the pilot. The pilot is seated there. Uh, there's a window, which is not accurate to the actual cartoon model. Um, if you look at a profile view, here's the blaster, or here's the orbital thrusters. Right there. And you can kind of see the paint job I was talking about. It's a, you kind of see like a, a slight spattering effect. So it's like light gray, but then there's like a darker grade, like misted on top. And then here's the back. Here are the handles to like open up the rear hatch, but this is, this is non-functioning on the toy at least. Um, as you can see, there's more detail sculpted on the Toinami one. This is a little bit more cartoon accurate. Um, all right, so you can actually read the, so they actually just reused the original um, Matchbox mold. So if you read here, you can see it says Robotech 1985. Um, Harmony Gold USA, Tatsunoko, Exo Squad, and copyright 1994, Playmate Toys. All right, so yeah, I guess I, I stand corrected. I guess um, uh, they, they must have updated the molds to include the newer copyright information. Because this toy was originally made by Matchbox, so. So yeah, the only thing I didn't put on was the cannons on the, on the top right here. So yeah, this is a very, I don't know, interesting look. So if you were like a old OG like Robotech fan, you know, this is something you could probably like reminisce over. Uh, for me at the time, it's like I said, I think when I bought this, I was just going through some sort of weird like phase where I, would, I was just hunting down Robotech toys. And I never had this as a kid. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to like find one. And I remember when I bought this, I think I got it for a pretty decent price. Oh, this thing rotates also. And when I say decent, I think I might have paid, I want to say, maybe between $40 and $60 for it, which is, isn't is bad considering how old it was at the time and how hard it is to come across one of these like mint in box. So yeah, I'm glad I have this. It's pretty neat. It's one of my little gems in my collection. Um, I do have some of the other um, Playmates Exo Squad Robotech stuff, and I'll probably do reviews on that in the future. But this one was the cool one because this is the one I still had mint in box. Oh, this is cool. The toes are articulated also. Articulated toes, legs move. Um, then they kind of they're kind of like spring loaded at the knees. They don't provide a lot of articulation. It's kind of more like I don't know. Feels like suspension. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. All right, so let's wrap this video up. Once again, my name is Lou. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber viewer, thank you so much for continued likes, comments, and support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.